Monsieur Enrique Garcias, merci beaucoup. Vous êtes venu. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure indeed. To Rabat, not to Rabat, I want to say, but to Marrakech, which is a warmer place, which is a wonderful place. And I hope you enjoy being with us uh, during these days. I hope so too. It's a beautiful place. You have been a very famous uh, banker and you have been a very famous minister. Uh, are you still working in the field? Well, yes. You know, I know the fact that I, I finished my fifth term as president of CAF's Development Bank of Latin America in 19, five years ago. Uh, I couldn't quit working, so I continued, you know, in, in boards, uh, in the universities, uh, in conferences, when in trouble. If you, since you're such an experienced traveler and economist, if you look at South America, which situation is the economy there now? No, I, I think, uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, this is not the best time for Latin America in general. Uh, many factors, I think that, uh, you know, the Latin America, and especially in the case of South America, uh, which was the region in the world, developing region in the world, in the early 60s, the most promising one. Uh, unfortunately, things have not developed the way it was expected. And if you make a comparison, for instance, with the emerging markets uh, in Asia, <clears throat> take Korea, uh, income per capita in, in Korea, in 1966 was one fourth of income per capita in Latin America. Today, it's the reverse. I will read you something out of The Economist a few years ago. They said the IMF forecast that uh, output in the region is shrinking by 9.4% in 2020, we talk. In Latin American economic tragedy. Is it a tragedy? Well, I, I would put it tragedy because that was the effect of the of pandemia and so forth. But the fact of the matter is that uh, the, the situation, it doesn't look as good because we have been logging on some fundamental things. Uh, one is the so-called mid-income trap. Uh, especially in the case of South America, the high dependence on raw materials without uh, providing value others uh, has been one of the reasons because of the fact that whenever the prices of raw materials are high, everybody gets crazy. This is more money. Yeah, you know, you, you, you believe you're a millionaire. But then history is a terrible coincidence. And we have been in that. So that's one element. And the other element is that uh, institutions have not been strong enough. And today you see polarization, fragmentation within the countries and within the region. So it's the time to not be negative. It's the time to be hopeful. To, but hopeful you cannot eat. Yeah, but to, to think that Let's hope that there is a consensus agreement that will have a well-established long-term strategy that will move us from the traditional comparative advantage model to a dynamic comparative advantage, a competitive advantage, where productivity and technology are the fundamental basis for establishing good quality growth and good quality growth means that it's productive, it's competitive, that creates employment, that gives opportunities to entrepreneurs, and not only the economic side, but they will be a source for improving the quality of life of the majority of the people. In, improve quality. What, is the main, what is the main problem? Inflation now? Unemployment? No, they, no in the market, on the market side, uh, well, but inflation, but it's not very high, with the exception of two cases. You know, one is Venezuela, of course, in Argentina. Uh, uh, Venezuela, well, 90%. Yeah, but uh, in the rest, it's higher. But, but I, I would say, of course, 
that's a critical point to, to manage. But I would say many people concentrate too much on the macroeconomic side and don't talk about the, the, the structural issues. The structural issues are productivity, quality of investment, the role of the public and the private sector, uh, those things. The policies, how you define the role of the, the public sector, state and the private sector. How do you create rules of the game that will attract on a regular and continuous basis for an investment of good quality. What has to be changed fundamentally in Latin America? I mean, well, I all think, countries concerned. No, I think the, the, the essential thing for me is, is, is institutional. To have a, a continuity, and probably it, it doesn't mean that every political sector or party has some change in vision, but you don't change every time. You know, wh why did the the, the, the emerging black countries in, in Asia be so, have been so successful because they have a long term strategy. Of course, you can argue and say, well, uh, of course, they, but they didn't have democratic government. Well, so the, the great challenge in Latin America is within democracy, how can you establish that right. institutional setting that will ensure continuity and fundamental policies. Let me ask you one last question. If you look at Latin America, South America, in various different countries, Brazil and Colombia and all of these, is there one you think that is maybe a model for South well, America? Today, all countries are complicated. You know, there were times, uh, in the times of good prices of raw materials, you had very successful country. Well, let's take my country, Bolivia. In the in the first part of this millennium, many things were positive. First, the, the gas exports to Argentina and, and to Brazil, high prices of of, of, of raw materials. Uh, Bolivia was eligible to the HIPIC, so no debt. So you have high growth with improving the quality of life of people is to lower, lower the gaps. It, it, you know, the Gini coefficient has been improved, considered poverty has been reduced. But they did not take advantage of that situation to make the relevant changes to increase, you know, productivity and to move from that traditional model. And now you are in trouble. Of course, it's not a crisis like that, but but the, the road is not very positive. So it's very important, yes. I, I think, to, to find the ways. That's Bolivia and that's Argentina, that's all the countries. You have to have consensus on basic, holistic approaches in a strategy. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure indeed. I appreciate talking to you. I didn't want to ask you, but why don't you go back into the government and give them a hand? No. No, no, I, I think... I, 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 I've been twice in government, and, and I was very happy that time. That was a long time ago. But, uh, you know, after being 26 years as president of CAF, I have a world record. Eh? Mm -hmm. Nobody in the world bank had been there. So, and before, I had been 18 years in the Inter-American Development Bank. And I think, of course, I'm willing to support my country. And, all the region, and in fact, I do so by giving my advice without political interest. Oh. Thank you very much. Very much. It's a great pleasure. I appreciate it.